Usually when we think of mechanics, we think of big heavy machines, like motors, with all sorts of levers and gear wheels. They seem to have very little in common with the strange world of quantum physics, which we know from tiny objects like atoms and photons. But thanks to something called optomechanics, some mechanical devices can be controlled by the quantum world. More specifically, a single particle of light. This is the Qubit Lab. In general, a particle of light, a photon, does not have enough momentum to significantly move a mechanical device. However, it is possible to enhance a photon's impact by using a little trick. Imagine, for example, a cantilever, a mechanical device that looks like a little diving board. And imagine it reflects light, just like a mirror. If the cantilever is hit by a photon, that photon will bounce off and the diving board will be pushed down a tiny bit. The trick is to have a second massive mirror facing the cantilever. Each photon then reflects back and forth between the mirrors and hits the cantilever many times, multiplying each photon's impact. The two mirrors form an example of what is called an optical cavity. <clears throat> Sorry, that uh, optical cavity made me a little dizzy. So this diving board shows not only how light can affect Larry's little brain, but also how light can affect mechanics. Cavity optomechanics is the science of how to exploit this. Researchers throughout Europe have joined forces in a project called MINOS to push this field forward. They've invented a variety of mechanical resonators, which is just a fancy way of saying little vibrating devices, like our diving board. These come in different shapes and sizes, but what they all have in common is that they can be used in optical cavities and therefore be greatly affected by light. And that's why they're called optomechanical structures. Creating good mechanical resonators is quite challenging. Quantum physicists need these devices to oscillate for roughly 100,000 times before they lose most of their energy to the surroundings. So if it were a guitar string that you plucked, it would have to keep on ringing for three minutes before it lost most of its sound volume. That requires some extremely careful design and choice of material to exchange as little as possible energy with the environment. Once this is achieved, it is actually possible to cool the resonator's motion. This is necessary because in its natural state, the resonator is warm, which means it vibrates. Now this is true of every warm object, though typically we don't see the movement. Because the tiniest disturbances will prevent us from controlling the resonator at the quantum level, we need to reduce the thermal vibration. Once again, this is where photons come in handy. To understand this principle a little better, let's think of our diving board as, well, an actual diving board. Before anyone uses the diving board, it is more or less still. When a person jumps on the diving board, they transfer energy to the board as they go, causing it to vibrate. This only works when they hit the board each time while it moves downwards. A person can also reduce the motion of the board by jumping on it when it moves upwards, absorbing energy from the diving board. A similar process occurs for photons in the optical cavity. Since the cantilever is warm, it vibrates, constantly changing the length of the cavity. Depending on that length, more or less photons will make it into the cavity. By tuning the cavity in the right way, most photons will hit the cantilever while it is moving up. The force applied by the photons dampens the cantilever's motion, just like the person that stops the diving board by jumping at the right moment. If the resonator is designed carefully, the inflow of heat energy from the environment is kept sufficiently smaller than the drain of energy by the photons. The result is that the motion of the cantilever freezes almost to a stop. Recently, the researchers of Minos have achieved an important goal in optomechanics. They have cooled the resonator's motion until the oscillation only contains one single quantum of energy, the smallest possible amount allowed by quantum physics. Even now, researchers who study optomechanics can make some pretty amazing measurements. They can detect movement as tiny as the nucleus of an atom, or detect forces so small that they could, in principle, determine the gravitational attraction between two persons separated by the Atlantic Ocean. And as these devices continue to improve, 
They will offer even better sensitivities in mass, force and displacement. Plus, these little guys might allow us to test whether or not some of the most complex laws of the quantum mechanical world can apply not only to things the size of an atom, but things that we can see with our naked eyes. Some atoms behave as if they were in two places at the same time. Could the same thing really be true for a cantilever controlled by light? Luckily for me, we've yet to prove that Larry can be in two places at once. I'm Larissa. And I'm Larry. We'll see you next time. What's up, guys? What the? What's up, Larry? I'm out of here. You want to go jump on the diving board? Sure.